I'm Chris Dancy, Media Relations Director for the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. I'm joined today by Al Yoder. He's a missionary pilot with the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism and their air wing, ABWE Air. Uh, Al flies primarily in the Amazon, uh, which Al is just something that most of our members couldn't even begin to imagine. Can we start? Tell me a little bit about what it's like to fly in the Amazon. Well, uh, navigation is quite easy. We got a thousand miles of runway that we're always over top. Uh, I guess our biggest challenges would be uh, weather. Uh, we have about 450, 500 inches of rain a year. We have uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity, uh, quite heavy, heavy in the winds at times. Um, we have to do a lot of sleeping in the airplane uh, to avoid some of that uh, occasionally. Uh, there's other exciting things like uh, our runway is always cluttered with either upcoming dolphins, which we have hit, or logs or other debris. So we, uh, with the currents of the wind and the currents of the air, it makes, uh, makes it kind of exciting. But other than that, it's really a, a wonderful place to fly, a wonderful place to fly. Well, now tell me a little bit about uh, ABWE and the, the sort of work that you do down there. I mean, public benefit flying, uh, you know, we, in this country we think of medical airlift flights or civil air patrol, that sort of thing. But tell me a little bit about uh, the work of a missionary pilot. Okay, it's, um, it, we've been around for about, I would say, maybe 60 years as an air wing. My father-in-law, uh, Hank Skeltema, was the first uh, missionary pilot with ABWE. Uh, came out of the ski troops uh, during uh, the, the uh, Second World War and, and Korea and went right into mission flying. Went, he was supposed to go to Alaska, but he ended up going to Brazil. And of course, they put him on the Amazon. Very, very needy area. Uh, we have about a thousand, uh, thousand miles of river that has uh, no, uh, no other legal airplanes in the area, we'll say, and uh, no runways. And, and uh, so most of the transport is done either by boat or, or by airplane. Uh, we do, um, uh, there's such a variety of work we do with the airplane. Probably the most uh, important work as far as volunteer work is the area, uh, in the area of medevac flights. Uh, we do, uh, we have a hospital. There's a, a couple of Brazilian hospitals and our American slash Brazilian hospital. And uh, we do provide the air ambulance for them. I've had quite a few of, of those type of flights. It's also a military controlled area, uh, and so there's a, a heavy uh, infestation of, of uh, army bases and the federal police to control the border. And uh, they don't have aircraft, so when they need uh, flights, we help them out also. Can you, can you tell me maybe one of your more memorable flights in the area, uh, either because of the flying conditions or uh, because of where you went and what you did? There's so many. Uh, Mm -hmm. Where to start? Um, there, there's, uh, I guess, the, one of the first ones that came into my mind is, is uh, there was a, a tribe of Indians, and we do have about oh, maybe 14 villages of Indians around our area, Takuna Indians. And uh, one of those tribes had a group in it that was very, what would we say, uh, unfriendly, um, uh, not very um, uh, happy with American missionary presence. And so uh, when I got there, uh, I, I used to have uh, my kids would fly with me a lot. I took one of my daughters with me. And when I got there, I was d uh, doing a delivery for the, uh, the uh, mayor of the town that had uh, used our airplane. And we got there, and the crowd didn't look real, real happy. So I locked my daughter in the airplane, and uh, uh, they pushed uh, the airplane and my daughter out into the seven-mile-an-hour current, and down the river she went. Well, an Indian pulled it back, and I said I would never, never go back. Well, about a month later, we got a call over the radio that there had been an alligator bite victim, something that happens quite often in our area. And uh, we went down there, and uh, there was a, a red sheet wrapped up on the beach. And uh, I was very glad that it was all wrapped up on the beach. But it turned out that this young man had fallen in with a, a bunch of the Crocs, and uh, he had gotten pretty bad torn up. His elbow and his, uh, and his shoulder were the bone. Uh, so uh, we did have to ship him out, and uh, the hospital uh, saved, his, uh, saved his life, and we brought him back, and it turns out it was their chief's son. And uh, then we were given an open red carpet door uh, to, to be able to come back and visit them when we wanted to. So we have that. Besides that, um, there's been other times, like in, we were transporting an airplane from Brazil 
to the States to get it retrofitted. And uh, we were over the Andes Mountains at about 9,000 feet. And it all clouded up, good old mountain weather. And at that point, a cylinder let go, a uh, brand spanking new uh, cylinder. And uh, we ended up spending the next 25 minutes in the clouds, descending in the Andes with charts that in that area are all in white because they aren't accurate. <laughs> It was a very exciting time for me. I would imagine. Uh -huh. um, in this country, when we talk about living with your plane, we're usually talking about residential air parks. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me earlier, you live with your airplane not quite the same as what we mean here. Can you tell me a little bit about where you are and um, your living conditions? And Yeah, uh, in our area, we have to be, uh, we have to be uh, uh, extra on guard. Uh, the United States has done a marvelous job of helping out uh, Colombia in the area of the, the, the drug trafficking. Well, all that has pushed kind of in over our border, and we're now in the epicenter of cocaine territory. So obviously security is a heavy issue, especially since we have the only legal airplanes, and we have two of them. Um, guards can be bought off very easy. Uh, a lot of things you have to watch out. We had eight men with machine guns come in once. and. Uh, and uh, liberate us of about $5,000 worth of fuel. So instead of uh, putting the airplanes um, in a hangar and us living in a house, uh, about seven years ago, uh, we actually built on top of 12 logs a, a 15 meter by 15 meter house, uh, two stories that floats right on the Amazon River, a ramp on each side. We got a 185 on each side. And the room upstairs actually extends, extends right over the airplane. So I can look out my bedroom window and uh, see the top of my wing. And so we're, we're right on top of the airplanes all the time. Um, finally, what would you say to somebody who's contemplating becoming a missionary pilot but hasn't made the decision yet? What, what, it is, what is it about missionary flying that attracted you, and what would you say to someone who might be considering it? Well, definitely missionary flying is all about other people. Of course, and I'm not going to, I don't know um, uh, how to say this or not, but I, I, um, we do work for God. Uh, we are a religious organization. Uh, it is about serving God. It is about flying uh, for other people. We're all supported from the states so, uh, and from churches and donors, so you're not going to get rich on the job. Uh, but there are, there are a couple areas in the world that without, um, without missionary aviation, everything suffers. Um, uh, just our physical presence in town keeps a lot of the bad stuff away uh, because they know uh, we are going to be honest and we are going to cooperate with the feds. Um, but it's the matter of the, the medevac flying, it's the transport flying, um, some of the missionaries to go by boats from one town, well, for, from the hospital to our place, they have to sit on a boat for 24 hours. In our airplane, it's 45 minutes. And so the, the uh, 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 ability to help people in a great way uh, is uh, with aviation. But uh, they're going to have to be willing for a, a lifetime of, of hard work. It's hard pushing airplanes up and off the, uh, the hangar. Uh, of climate that's quite extreme, 100 degrees in our case, uh, all year round, 100% humidity all year round. Um, and, uh, but it's... Um, it's I don't really see those, having lived there all my life, I don't really see those as great difficulties because I'm accustomed. So I don't really know if I can answer that fairly except to say that it is, it is a very fulfilling life, uh, but it's a hard life, and, um, and we sure need it. Uh, we haven't seen uh, new pilots come down in the last seven to ten years, and we're running quite thin on, in that area. All right. Well, I appreciate your coming in and talking with us. Uh, it's interesting to, to hear a uh, type of public benefit flying that we don't often hear a lot about. I appreciate it. We appreciate your membership, Al, and the work you do down there. Well, thank you very much for this invitation. We were here to interview you, but thank you for the invitation. I'm very proud to be a part of AOPA. Uh, they have helped us many times over the years, uh, especially through uh, when we came back into the States to get recycled again. And, uh, and, and they're glad to be part of this organization. Fantastic. Thanks for watching AOPA Live. I'm Chris Dancy.